Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here is your latest integral of the day. I'm doing this one because it was requested by my students. It's on their exam review and they're taking their test tomorrow. So we have the indefinite integral of 9 cosecant cubed x over tan x dx. I'm going to show you two different ways that you can evaluate this integral. The first one I think is the shortest, most straightforward, but the second one might be more comfortable for you. So one thing I want to emphasize before we get going on all of these trig integrals is that most of them only involve u substitution, and you just got to remember who's friends. And when I say friends, I mean which trig functions derivatives involve one another. So we've got sine x and cosine x, and then we've got secant x and tan x, and then we've got, that's right, cosecant x and cotangent x. And not only do the derivatives of these functions involve one another, we also have Pythagorean identities, right? Three of them in which these functions work together. So it's natural when you evaluate trig integrals, you're going to do u-subs with these guys and use your Pythagorean identities. This one you don't even have to do that much. So as soon as I start looking here, I go cosecant and tangent, they are not friends. No. So who can I switch so that we get people hanging out with what they don't want to be diverse. They just want to stick to their one BFF and that's it. So cosecant is cubed. I could make cosecant squared and then another cosecant and break it up. But tan x in the denominator, I can very easily switch to cotangent. So I'm feeling good about that. That's where I'm going to take this. So I have integral 9 cosecant cubed x cotangent x dx. Okay, already I feel good. We got the friends back together. Then now you think to yourself, I'm going to do a U sub most likely with these trig integrals. What's the better choice for you? Should we let U be cosecant x or should we let U be cotangent x? And notice I never once said let U be cosecant cubed x. The majority of the time when you do your U subs with these trig integrals, don't put the exponent on the function that you're letting u equal. It makes for a messy, messy chain rule when you find du, so I don't advise that you do it. All right, well, let's just play each one out and see which one's gonna work out better. So if u is cosecant x, du would be negative cosecant x cotangent x dx. Yeah, you have gotta know those. And then if u was cotangent x, du would be negative cosecant squared x dx. So which one works out better? Well, let's see here. If u is cotangent x, du is negative cosecant squared x dx, but then I'd have one extra cosecant x, and cosecant x to the first, I'd be stuck with it. I can't use a Pythagorean identity and switch it to cotangents. So I'm feeling like this is not going to work. So hopefully the other choice works. If u is cosecant x, du is negative cosecant x cotangent x. Yeah, I can steal one of these away so that I can make this happen. And then I'd have u squared. That's totally fine. We love it. It's going to work out. Let me rewrite things first so you can see, though. This is 9 cosecant squared x times cosecant x cotangent x dx. Do you see now okay? Oh, good. And then technically... Let's be precise, let's be technical. Negative du is cosecant x cotangent x dx. So when I make this u sub, I'm gonna to have to add a negative and I like to put it outside. I'm also gonna put the nine there. Okay, here we go. Let's rewrite the integral in terms of u. So cosecant squared x is gonna be u squared. And then all of this loveliness right here is just du. Good, 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 okay. And then from here, we can take the antiderivative, easy peasy, add one to the exponent, divide by the new exponents. We have negative 9 thirds u cubed plus c, which is negative 3. Who was u? Cosecant plus c. And we are done. Okay, how was that? That's option one. Option one. Pretty quick and clean, right? I'm talking you through it. So obviously if you sat down and did it, it shouldn't take this long. Now, option two, say cosecants, cotangents just make you nervous. I understand. Until you're, you know, really solid in knowing your derivatives, maybe this is a frightening thing for you. So you could just say, I don't like that they gave me an integral and the trig functions are not friends. So let me rewrite everybody in terms of sines and cosines. I know sine and cosine, they're friends and I feel really comfortable over there. 
So cosecant cubed x would be one over sine cubed x. And then if I have tan x in the denominator, that's the same as having cosine x over sine x being multiplied throughout. Okay, so then from here, I can clean up and then I have integral nine outside cosine x over sine to the fourth x dx. And like I said, most of the time with these integrals, we just do u sub. What's the better choice for you? Should you be sine x or should you be cosine x? Well, maybe you have to write out the first couple lines for you to see which is the better choice. So du here would be cosine x dx, whereas du here is negative sine x dx. Which one do I have? I have cosine x dx, so u needs to be sine x. Very good. The other one wouldn't work. You can't have negative sine x dx and then all the signs be in the bottom that won't work so we've got nine integral all of this cosine x dx that's just du oh how lovely over sine to the fourth x would be u to the fourth are we all right oh good so i can rewrite this nine integral u to the negative fourth du now add one to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, negative 9 thirds, u to the negative third plus c. And then u was sine x, so the coefficient out front simplifies to negative 3. I've got sine x to the negative third plus c. But since sine is being raised to the negative third, that's the same as 1 over sine of x cubed. And then I can write my final answer as negative 3 cosecant cubed x plus c. Beautiful. And look, we got the same answer as with the first method. Math works. I say that sarcastically. <laughs> I said, uh, one of my friends said that in high school when, when our teacher showed us two different ways to solve a problem. And we were joking. Math works. Look at that. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed both solution techniques. Which one do you think you're going to use? Should you see this problem on an exam in the future? I'm not saying if it's on the test or not. Honestly, I can't remember. I wrote the test weeks ago. So I have actually, today's going to be a double bonus day. I'm recording one more integral of the day because there was one other problem that the students needed help with from the study guide. And, you know, I should be spreading my content out. And as much as I want my channel to do well, I want my students to do well even more. So here I am. I'm going to publish two videos. So stay tuned. It should be coming up right after this one. Leave a comment down below. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know what you're studying right now and which integration method you prefer. Also, I have a very exciting announcement about a giveaway. I'll be publishing that video soon. So stay tuned. Make sure your notifications are on and you're subscribed. All right. Love you all. I'll be back soon.